Hi, this is Mahesh Ravi and in today's video, we'll be looking at the prototyping tool Figma and how to do um, some micro interactions using Figma. So let's get started with that. Okay, we're going to go to figma.com and this is what you're going to see. Figma is a free prototyping tool, which is cloud-based and it has really amazing features that you can compare it with sketch and similar software like xd and all that so one of the major advantages of using uh, something like figma is that this is uh, entirely a browser-based software so you don't have to download any um, applications and another thing is that team working and collaboration while working on certain projects will become really really easy when you're using a browser project because it's always online you don't have to um, none of the files are offline in this case so let's get started with figma so if you look at on your right top side you will have a new file icon so click on that and you can create a new file so we are inside the new project window right now it's very familiar the ui is very familiar uh, to any prototyping softwares that you might have used earlier. So to get started with this is very easy, but let me just quickly um, give you a brief about the UI here. So in here you can see your layer, then there is an asset panel, and you can also see the uh, move controls, the artboard tool, there is a shape tool, pen tool, text tool, the move tool, and the comment tool. Here you can see there is design, a prototype tab, and also a code tab where you can actually take your design CSS codes and you can export them to Zeppelin or any um, other application that you need. So let's come back to design and let's start making a project, right? So here, if you look at this menu button, so here there are some other options where if you need to download a plugin, you can go here and do that. And you have several other options here also, which we will discuss in a later video. But today we're going to look at how to create a simple micro transition using Figma. And we will be using the neomorphic graphic design style uh, for this. So neomorphism is a really, really happening trend right now in design where uh, there's a lot of soft shadow, uh, interesting shapes, flat design, uh, glow, and all that. So it, it is sort of like a stripped down version of the skeomorphic design movement. So let's take a look at how to achieve that look. So we're going to go to the artboard tool and when you click on this you can see several templates popping up here so you can choose any template that you want so i'm going to go with the um, iphone 8 template so when you click on this the artboard is created so you can see the artboard title and you can see that in the layer window so you can just double click this and you can change this to screen one so i'm going to call it screen one this is my first screen and here we can add um, our effects so the first thing that i'm going to do is select this and I can change my color, right? So if you come to the right side, you can see the properties window and in here there is a fill option. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to change the color. So let me change it to this color. So I can do that and close this. So my fill color is here. Now I want to define a shape. I want to create a button. So I'm going to go here and if you click on this arrow, you can see all the tools that you have. I'm going to select the rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a rectangle here. So I have a rectangle in here, right? You can hold shift on your keyboard and drag the corners to uniform scale the objects and you can move them around with the arrow. So I'm going to keep it exactly in the center, right? And when you select the object, the properties of that particular object is going to be here. So Interestingly, there is a blending mode option, which is really, really useful. Um, and also we have the fill color. So we'll click here and we will choose the color that we have already created for the background. For neomorphic effect to work, the background and the foreground needs to be in the same color. So we're gonna choose that one. Now we have a shape, but because it's the same color, we are not able to see it, right? So you can see that in the screen. In the layer window, it shows us a rectangle. So I'm gonna select this and if you zoom in, you can see the corner radius button so you can select one and then drag it so it becomes a rounded shape right so we have a rounded rectangle button here and if you come here to the design 
window the properties window you can see that there are there are strokes that you can add to this design and also there are effects that you can add so for creating a neomorphic effect we need a shadow right so we're going to click on the effect the plus icon next to the effects and it automatically adds a drop shadow uh, to it you can see the drop shadow happening now it's more visible right in the background even if it's the same color because of the shadow we can see that the shape is right there so we're going to click on the drop shadow icon just right here and we will see a lot of options in here there is a blur value so you can increase the blur value i'm going to change this to 10 i want a little more blur in here and i can change the direction the x i want it to be 6 and the y also i want it to be 6 so i changed it like that this is the uh, way that i want to see this maybe i can reduce the blur a little bit i will change it to 5 well, let's keep it at 10 itself so I'm getting a more softer shadow edge. Now one thing that I want to do is that I can click on this and you can change the shadow color and also the opacity. So in here I want to reduce the opacity of the shadow. So if I bring it down, the opacity of the button comes down, the shadow button comes down. So we have this right now, but we are not done yet. This is not neomorphic yet. So for neomorphic to work, there needs to be a glow on the other end, the opposite out end of the shadow so to do that we can click here and one of the cool features in figma is that you can add more effects to the same layer right so rather than duplicating the layer itself you can add one more effect to it so i'm going to click on the effect and it adds another uh, drop shadow effect so you can click on this and you can turn it off so when you click on the effect window this is the first one that we have created and this is the second one that we have created the blur value is here the x and y values here so let's change the blur value to 10 we have it now the position is in the same uh, space where the our initial drop shadow is we want this to be inverted we want the shadow to go this side so to do that we're going to change this to negative 6 and negative 6 in y so we have the shadow like this here now there are uh, the opacity adjustments and the color adjustment that we have to do here so let's come to this, reduce the opacity first. I'm going to bring down the opacity, right? And we can now change the color of the shadow to something more brighter, right? So we can see that it's creating a glow on the edge of our button, creating a neomorphic effect, right? So this is how we create a neomorphic button, right? So we have our button set. now we need to add a little bit of micro interaction to this to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a plugin to bring in an icon into this button right so you can go to this and click on plugins if you haven't installed a plugin you can just go to manage plugins and you can look for plugins so there will be a lot of featured plugins and you can even search for a plugin that you want so i'm going to search for icons and it's going to show um, some icon related plugins i have already installed it if you haven't done it you can just click on the button and it will be installed onto your figma so we're going to go back to our app window and we have it here so if you go to plugins you can see that there are two icons uh, that i've installed icon related um, plugins that i've installed i'm going to click on the material design icon and i can see the lot of icons here that i can use right so you can also search for it I'm going to click and choose this button right here, this clock button right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and scale this uniformly. Right? I'm going to come here and I'm going to place it right in the side of, middle of the button. So I have it right now. Now uh, there are certain things that I can I can do here to make this more um, you know look seamlessly with our design. So I can change the color value here, and I can change the color of the shape from slow solid to a linear gradient so it's now a gradient right now and i can change the colors here so if i click on the color i can change the gradient color to any color that i want so let me just go and choose what is a color which will work here okay and instead of this i can maybe yeah i think this sort of works right 
okay so the opacity here is a little less so that it sorts of fades into this ground i'm just bringing it a little yeah so i think this looks cool right now so we have a uh, button like this now we need to create a micro uh, interaction when um, somebody is hovering over this button i need a micro interaction to happen and it's pretty easy here in figma so what we have to do is we can so let's make sure that so right now we have a screen and the icon is actually outside our artboard so it's it's a wise idea to drag it under our screen so that it becomes a part of our um, scene right so everything is inside the artboard and this is how we should organize our um, artboards right so we have the first shape here so i'm going to take this one i'm going to duplicate this by pressing ctrl d it's going to duplicate the button and in here i'm going to change the uh, way how this button is going to react so i'm going to go here and i clicked on the alarm button if you double click this because it's a vector you can actually choose the shapes and you can modify the shapes accordingly so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a couple of changes so i'm going to take these shapes so i'm going to double click on this i'm going to select this point i'm going to bring it right here and also this one so that the time sort of becomes like this right and what i'm going to do is i will basically move this up so i'm going to select uh, these two points and i'm going to move i'm going to move this a bit up right i'm going to do that here also move it a little bit up okay so now i have two versions of this button here so slightly different versions of the same file right so we have in screen one and screen two we have it now it's time to add the interaction so let's go to prototype so we are in design right now and let's go to prototype let's select the button right and we're going to say that when somebody hovers over this button it's going to change to this screen so in the interaction we need to change on tap to while hovering and on hovering, you have to navigate to screen two. And what should be the animation? Instead of instant, we are going to change it to smart animate. So it's going to smart animate the shape to this one. So let's go here. Let's quickly take a preview. And we have the icon right now. And if you go here, it's going to smart animate to this. You can see the shapes are changing and also the alarm clock the eyebrows of the alarm clock is moving a slightly bit up so that's a very interesting way to create an interesting um, you know micro interaction on your button right with neomorphism so i hope um, you have enjoyed this tutorial and a brief introduction to figma i'll see you with another video next week till then bye take care